welcome to the program. My name is Catherine Mwangi. This is What's Your Story right here on KTN Home. Thank you for making the time to tune in today. We are still at Mombasa County, thankful to the Pride in Paradise Hotel and Spa for granting us this beautiful space to share people's stories from. Our guest today is a very good friend of mine. And that aside, he is also a minister of the gospel. His name is Apostle Judah Atemba. He's the lead minister of Global Apostolic Mission Church located here in Mombasa. Bamburi. Oh, Wonderful. but Mombasa, <laughs> Bamburi is part of Mombasa. Yeah, Bamburi is part of Mombasa, <laughs> but it's outside Mombasa. You know, Mombasa is an island. Umeanza. So we're in the... We're in the uh, Umeanza. Yes, <laughs> Nimeanza. <laughs> Karibu ni Mombasa. <laughs> Tumekaribi. Ah. Tumekaribi. Tumekaribishwa? Tumekaribishwa. Yes. yes, kabisa. <laughs> Ukamua. Nikamua kabisa. Ya. Kuja hivyo. Yeah. Wajua mi ni mbara pia. <laughs> Kando na kuwa huku kwa mda, <laughs> mimi ni mbara. Mbara means from Nairobi. Nimetoka bara. Ni, well, nilizaliwa Nairobi. <laughs> Alafu nikaenda kitale. <laughs> no, tukaenda Eldoret. <laughs> and then bada ya kutoka Eldoret, tukaenda kitale. So right. maisha yangu mengi nimesomea kitale. Aha. Mm. Hey. It's so good to see you. Good to see you too. Finally. Ya, yeah, finally. Tulonaenga tu kwa simu. Ah, sante. <laughs> How is your family? My family is fine. Yes. They're all doing well. Your miracle babies. Oh my goodness. Oh my. They are doing very fine. Yeah. Excellently, you know, kept of the Lord. That is nice. Mm. So, uh, ulitembea. Mm -hmm. Story yako ni mrefu, ah. but wacha tuone. Okay. Ulitembea, uliitwa, uh -huh. ukatembea. Oh my. Eh? Let me let me give you the story. Please. In the late 90s, mm -hmm. I came to Mombasa. Mm. And uh, having come to Mombasa, I I just came in briefly. Right. And I loved Mombasa. Oh. Then I went back to my village. Okay. So when I went back to my village, I, 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 after some time, I felt, you know, there was a vacuum. I, was, I felt misplaced. Uh -huh. And I felt I wasn't fitting in the village. Okay. My father just retired. He, he was an engineer. Mm -hmm. So he's late right now. So my father just retired and he had set up some businesses there and mm -hmm. he had engaged me. Mm -hmm. And I was in charge of one of his businesses. But I was feeling, you know, in a misfit state of... So I, I, I just felt an urge of leaving the village. Yes. And that time my dad didn't have fear for me. So it, uh, I just told him, my, I told my dad and my mom, I'm, you know, I'm going to Mombasa right. by faith. And the only souvenir, the only, uh, I, can, I, I can call it here, the only uh, heritage or in, inheritance that I got from him was a brown leather bag. And I fixed all my things inside and I carried them. So I left my village in a in a village called Epanja, uh -huh. Talamuti Spring area. <laughs> Where is Kitale? In Mumias. Mumias? Yes, in Mumias. How old I were you? I was about 20. 20? Yeah, I was about 20. Wow, you are radical, eh? Yeah, very radical. <laughs> hey, uh -huh. I just gotten born again. Right. So I was on fire uh -huh. for the Lord. So I left my village and walked to uh, Kakamega. Uh -huh. That's about, uh, it's about 13 or so kilometers. Go to, yeah, on uh -huh. foot. Go to Kakamega, my auntie was working in the provincial hospital, uh, the provincial hospital then. So I went to my auntie's place, stayed there for about two days. She gave me 200 shillings. Mm -hmm. So I, I used the 200 shillings to go to Kisumu. Getting to Kisumu, I go to a friend's place. He's called Moses Simali Oyugi. Mm -hmm. I know he will watch this later on. Yeah. We just reconnected the other day after 20 years. What? He got my number. I went to the village uh -huh. and got, I got my number. Uh -huh. And he called me. I said, this is your friend. And I called him by his three names. I told him, Moses Simali Oyugi. Uh -huh. So I stayed at, at Brother Moses Simali's uh, home. He used to work for X Telecoms then. I stayed at his place for about three days or four. Then he gave me 500 shillings. And remember, I'd used the 200 shillings from Kakamega to Kisumu. Yes. So with the 500 shillings, I thought of going to Nairobi. Uh -huh. now, then in the late 90s, I didn't know so many people in Nairobi. Uh -huh. So I decided, let me uh, go back to Kitale, where I grew up. Mm -hmm. So I used part of the money to go to Kitale. Getting to Kitale, uh, I, I was trying to, you know, speak to my uncles and relatives to help me, but none of them, you know, seemed willing to help. Yeah. So I stayed in Kitale for a while, remaining with about uh, 300 shillings, I moved to a place called Moise Bridge. Uh -huh. Moise Bridge is in between Kitale and uh, Eldred. There's a, a cousin sister of mine uh -huh. that we grew up with. She was a matron, at the same time the nurse of the, sc okay. of the school uh, in Moise Bridge, Nangili, a uh, girl's high school then. So I stayed with her and she found, you know, she saw the grace that I was carrying mm. and the passion for the Lord. And she told me, you know what, I would love you, I, I would like you to just uh, stay around and be one of our local pastors here. Okay. But deep down my heart, because I'd left my, my, my village telling my parents, I'm going to Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Deep down in my heart, I used to feel I'm, I need to get to Mombasa. So wait, did you know where you were coming to? To Mombasa? I didn't know. You didn't know? I didn't know. But <laughs> I just had a burden of coming to Mombasa. Yes. My brother had been here. 
he had preceded me mm -hmm. and uh, you know god was helping him he had gone into uh, the clearing and forwarding industry mm -hmm. he had begun to work and then later on he was called into ministry mm -hmm. so my brother is my role model Apostle Shadrach Katemba, mm -hmm. he will watch us later on. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he's a great man. Yes. This is the man that helped me, uh, helped me to know the Lord. Yes. He sent me a card while I was in the village, uh -huh. in the village and the card had the picture of the uh, two elephant tusks the, that represent Mombasa. And the scripture that was on that card was only one verse, John chapter 14, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. Then I had become an antichrist. I was, you know, I was really against the Lord. Uh -huh. I was reading, I was only reading the Old Testament because I'd gotten into a sect. Okay. And I'd gone, I'd gone in, into error. Mm. So he sent me this card and I began to search the scriptures. Then I, I bumped into a scripture that says you search the scriptures for in them you think uh, you, you have life but you've not come into me. And I read another one in the book of Mark which says, uh, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying I am he and will deceive many. And then I had believed in a man and had really gone you know, astray. So uh, to cut the long story short, mm -hmm. while in Moise Bridge at my cousin sister's place, yeah. She didn't. She wasn't willing also to, uh, you know, support my journey to Mombasa. Mm, she wanted you to stay there. She wanted there. me to stay there. She had little children, and I'd, I was really, you know, co I'd connected with them. Yes. I was helping her in the household cause and all that. Yes. And she felt like we're family, and we need to stay together. Yeah. The one morning I, I just woke up, and I remember it was a Sunday morning, and I was only remaining with 200 shillings. I think 100 shillings because I remember she gave me 200 shillings. Okay. Then after she gave me 200 shillings, I used that 100 shillings to go to uh, Eldoret. I took a Matatu PSV vehicle, public service vehicle, to Eldoret. Getting to Eldoret with 200 shillings, then we used to have buses called Eldoret Express. Mm -hmm. So I boarded Eldoret, Eldoret Express by faith to Nakuru. <laughs> Go to Nakuru, and getting to Nakuru, I had a hope of a mentor, you know, wow. that had been, you know, I, I was in a meeting that I got born again yeah. in, in Eldoret uh -huh. those days. So I walked to this mentor, and he had just finished service, and the mentor, God didn't want him to help me. God wanted him to, God wanted to be involved in my case. Mm -hmm. So the mentor looks at me and is like, he, I think he was fatigued. Mm -hmm. So he just pointed me to his personal assistant. Wow. And then the personal assistant told me, I don't have a witness in my spirit. So I walked out and on the way met uh, a friend that we were staying in the same house in Kitale. And uh, a lady, uh, the lady that he was, uh, uh, he was the, I think they were in courtship with. And uh, when I saw them, I, I had a sigh of relief, and I felt, wow, God has sent me help. And we began to converse, and when they had my plight, you know, they just abandoned me. What? So I walked to the railway station. That was the first day uh -huh. after leaving my cousin's sister's house. I walked to the railway station. Getting to the railway station, I, I, I found that the train had not come, the train that was uh, commuting to Na Nairobi. Uh -huh. So good enough, there were some passengers there and we, they opened a room for us where we lodged the whole night. That was the first night. And remember, I'd only taken a cup of tea in the morning at my cousin's sister's place. And Akuru was very cold that time. So we spent in that room, and you know, it's, you semi-sleep. You can't sleep in such you an atmosphere. Yeah. Your stomach is empty. So we spent in that room till morning. When it dawned at 6 a.m., I took my, my luggage again, and I walked from Nakuru to Gilgil. It's about 42.6 kilometers from Nakuru to Gilgil, if Walked. I'm not wrong. Yeah. Because you didn't have money. I didn't have money on me. You hadn't eaten? I hadn't eaten. How do you walk all that long without? I was just crest. So getting to Nakuru, I tried to, you know, get some help, and I wasn't getting help in any way. So the, the only help I found is I went to a certain church, and the security man, you know, uh, brought me in. And we stayed with him till morning. I didn't tell him my problem. I didn't tell him where I was going. All I needed is I needed accommodation for that night. So you slept in the church? Yeah, I slept. In, no, it, not really in the church. Yeah. In the church compound with outside. the security man. Yeah, outside. Wow. That is the second day without anything in my stomach. So I, on the third day in the morning, I took off again. And my goal is Mombasa. Deep down my spirit, I'm just here in Mombasa. Mombasa. So I took off. Getting to the first roadblock in Gilgil, mm. there was a bus, a Costa bus that was standing by and uh, policemen were inspecting it. So I felt that I'm tired and my strength was, you know, becoming little. Depleted, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So I decided, let me walk to the other side of the Costa bus. I didn't want to meet this policeman. Mm. I didn't want to converse. I don't have much strength. Mm. And uh, the policeman was just used by God. As I was navigating and negotiating, going to the other side, the policeman went round the bus and came and faced me and told me, young man, you're going to look for a job? And I told him, yes. And he told me, wait here. So I just obeyed and waited. While waiting, I think, I think there was a, a soldier, 
an army man that mm -hmm. had gone back to the barracks, I, 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 I keep assuming mm -hmm. that he had left his, his driving license. So he had gone to pick it. So when he came, he dropped me in Naivasha. Getting to Naivasha by the road, I looked and saw the signage, my Mahu, 120 mm. kilometers. That was my last or my final hope. So I, I, I didn't have strength. I'm becoming weak. This yeah. is the third day. I haven't Without eaten. Without food. And I'm like, oh, God, what am I going to do? Good enough, as I was walking by the road on that my Mahu, uh, Naivasha my Mahu road, there was a woman I will never forget. Her teeth were brownish. She was standing by, and her pickup was reversing. As the pickup was reversing, the woman was climbing behind the pickup. And I also took a step of faith. I climbed with her. And as I was climbing, I told her, Mama, please tell these people to drop me at my Mahu. And she complied. Wow. We went by faith. And on the way, she dropped on the way. She was just like an angel to me. She dropped on the way and told these people, please drop this young man at my Mahu. So I got my, my, at my Mahu midday. And I stayed there, waited for my uncle. I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't return him a letter. Waited him for, to come. And remember, I'd been in Moisbridge for close to one month mm. eh, before I began this journey. Mm. Yeah, so getting to my Mahu, I stayed there until it was about six when I saw the Extelecoms bus. My mm -hmm. uncle used to work for Extelecoms, mm -hmm. and at the same time, he used to operate in Longonot at station. Okay. So he used to go to Nairobi, Extelecoms in the yeah. morning, then he, come, he comes back to file some reports at Longonot at station in the evening. Yeah. And now, he, when the bus came, I saw the Extelecoms bus, and I knew, wow, my uncle has come. Yeah. But he didn't alight. His colleague alight, and I asked him, is uh, Christopher Nyongesa in that bus? We, we call him in the village Rombas. Uh -huh. And he said, yes, he's in the bus, but in case he, he doesn't come to pick you, I'll send someone to pick you. This is strange. I don't know him. Then the bus went to a long at station. At around 7 p.m., that's when that bus came back while going to Nairobi. And my uncle lighted. Mm -hmm. Then he saw me. And I'm like, how did he, he was like, how did you get here? Mm -hmm. I didn't even tell him much, you know. Yeah. And he looked at me, and he saw this guy seems to be frail and yeah. weak. So he took me to his house. And then uh, he prepared a meal. While he was preparing the meal, I remember it was Ugali and eggs. He prepared it and put it on the table. And then he, he prepared some water for me because uh, my mouth is very cold. Yes. He prepared some water for me, uh, some hot water, and I went to take a shower. So I, I, well, I, I just finished taking the shower and sat down to eat. And God used him. And, and you know, God just used him um, to boil some hot water for me. Before I took the, uh, the solid food, Mm. I sense just entered me and I, I, I picked the glass. Yes. And it had hot water and I began to drink it. And I remember that I'd not eaten for three days. Yes. Or even drank anything. Yeah. yeah. So I drank the water and after it had sunk, that's when I ate the food. Wow. So I stayed at my uncle's place for about three days. Then uh, one morning we boarded the Extelecoms bus to mm -hmm. Nairobi. We go to Nairobi, he paid for me the lunatics then. Mm -hmm. Then we didn't have this SGR. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had the lunatics, so he paid for me the, the lunatics. I remember he had given me 300 shillings. And I didn't know Nairobi that well. So what I did was just marking. I was looking uh -huh. at the landmarks. He gave me 300. So I went to the uh, train station yeah. and I found it, it was 350. So I came back to him and told him, uncle, it's 350. Good enough, I found him not having left. Yeah. So he added me 50 bob. I paid the lunatics. And, and then I, I, I went and stayed in the train station. You know, because it was midday, midday or some minutes mm -hmm. to two. I stayed there until evening, then we took off. Then the lunatics used to take close to 13 hours to Mombasa. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, or 12, 12 or 13 hours. Yeah. When you leave Nairobi at 7 p.m., you will get to Mombasa by around uh, 7 a.m. in the morning. Uh -huh. So we got to Mombasa and I alighted at Changamwe. Uh -huh. My sister was here mm -hmm. then, and the brother, was, uh, no, the, the husband, my mm -hmm. brother-in-law, was uh, one of the station managers at the Changamwe railway station. Mm -hmm. So I lighted there, I went to my sister's place. Wow. And we stayed with my sister, you know, in a, I think it was a three bedroom house. And you know, I, her living room was my everything. Because so, this, she had, so before we even land here, yes. this journey to Mombasa took mm. how long? It took close to one and a half a month. Wow. Because I stayed in Moyes Bridge for close to, let's a say month one, one month, and yeah, one month, two weeks. Because I stayed in, in Moyes Bridge for close to one month. I was in Kakamega for two days. I was in Kisumu for about three days, you know, in Kitale while wandering and all that, yeah. about three days and so. So yeah. about one month and two weeks. Largely without food and water and sustenance. It, it was just God. My goodness. Yeah, it was just God. So when you landed here, what did that feel like? It was, there was a sigh of relief. But you know, sometimes when you have a burden and, 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 you're, and you're going to places whereby you don't know how they'll receive you. Yeah. It, you know, it nags you. Mm. Because sometimes you've, you've moved to a place like Father Abraham, and you get to a place and on the back of your mind you feel like, 
am I going to be received or am I not going to be received? But I thank God for my brother-in-law and my sister. They received me well. Yeah. I stayed with them until when I began to get some, you know, manual jobs. Yes. I began, I think, uh, the first job I began to do was we building a road. Wow. And I began to dig with, you know, those heavy uh, jembes. Uh -huh. It was hectic. What? Ah, uh, it was hectic. Building roads. Yeah, we tried. We built, we built some roads here and there. I tried. <laughs> then later on, I did. I worked in a steel company. Mm -hmm and it was hectic there were no safety measures in place and this is as a casual laborer yeah as a casual laborer yes and i can uh, let me surprise you yeah even in those moments of working as a casual laborer sometimes i, I would be i would be on a three days fast and i'm climbing pillars if you come down you're forgotten wow. climbing pillars pulling iron bars and you know very heavy sheets but God kept me, mm. you know, during those moments, God helped me now to begin to further my studies. Mm. I began to study IT. Nice. I did some leadership courses uh -huh. and that way. Uh, but before then, I think it's good for me to remember mm. a woman that later on received me. Mm -hmm. She's called May Kilemeko. May Kilemeko received me after I'd been doing those manual jobs uh, while staying at my mother's, uh, my sister's uh, yeah. place, sorry. Uh, she received me at her place. My brother introduced me to her. Uh, wow. They were fellowshipping in the same church. Yeah. So when she received me, I went to stay at her place. And what was I doing? I was a janitor. I was cutting grass for her in her compound, you know, trimming the fence, washing her cars. The, the husband was a tour guide. So I, I would wash her car and the husband's car and take care of the chicken. She was rearing chicken. Uh, these are uh, mm. the, the broilers. Mm. About sometimes 2,000, sometimes 1,000. So after washing the cars, because I wake up at five in the morning, I used to sleep pa sometimes past midnight, and I would be awake past uh, uh, at five a.m. in the morning. So I'll, I'll be awake to see to it that I wash the cars. After washing the cars, I dash and see that the chicken are okay. I change their uh, their food, the water, and I check if the you know the, the, the broilers need to to stay in a very neat place. Mm -hmm. If the place is dirty, they'll they'll, they'll get infected yeah. and you will lose them. So I'll have sessions of changing, uh, let me call their bedding. Oh my <laughs> yeah, they're changing their bedding, yeah. which is sawdust. So change it and replace it with, with fresh uh, sawdust. So you are living with her? I stayed with her uh -huh. uh, for close to a year. Wow. She's a wonderful woman. Uh -huh. And to surprise you today, where God has helped us to build our home, she's a neighbor. Wow. In the same neighborhood. She's a woman. From a janitor I, I, to building your own you know, home. And by the grace of God. Wow. Yeah, this, we're in the same neighborhood. And, you know, um, when, she, when, when she brought me in, she asked me, how much would you like me to pay, pay you? you? And I told her 800 shillings. And she was like, 800 shillings? What will you be doing with 800? Uh -huh. Then she added me 200. So she began to pay me <laughs> to get 1,000. Yeah. So you were seeing like you were like a jinima. I remember Champali Yangu. You know Champali? Uh -uh. Champali and slippers. Don't get time at the slippers. You know, it's Kiswa Elicha Mombasa. Okay. So Champali Yangu ya kwanza, you know, when I, I bought my first Champali na Beseni, and it was a treasure. What? It was like, you know, that was like my shoe. Yeah. It was my stiletto. <laughs> <laughs> oh from my, my first salary. Wow. So I stayed with that. They had given me an accommodation. Mm. And my bathroom come toilet was a septic, you know, it was a, it was a septic uh, septic hall. Wow. They built the toilet yeah. on, the, on the septic uh, hall. And now anytime you're taking a shower, you used to make sure that you put your basin on it. Because if anything <laughs> drops in the septic <laughs> hall, <laughs> it's gone forever. Bye-bye. Wow. What? Yeah. So how did you move mm. from there? What happened after the year? Now, after having stayed with that, that's when now I, I began to further my studies. And while furthering my studies, in fact, I remember a young man, God bless his soul, and God rest his soul in eternal peace. There's a young man, he was called Kambi. Kambi was, uh, uh, Kambi used to call Auntie May. We, mm. we call her Auntie May till today. Kambi used to call Auntie May Auntie. And uh, Kambi was going to uh, the army for training. Then Kambi told me I had, had been, this uh, fee had been paid for me to study information technology. But now that I'm going to the army, can you take that opportunity? And I told him, why not? Unfortunately, when Kambi went to the training, after seven months, we buried him. Oh. Yeah, he had a challenge. He used to have a challenge. And he was very ambitious. He yeah. knew that he will go through the training yeah. and he intended to become a pilot yeah. in the army. But unfortunately, he, make he succumbed. Wow. Yeah. Hey, so it's during uh, having stayed with Auntie May, 
I furthered my studies and then I began to get opportunities. Mm -hmm. The first opportunity I got was I worked as a cyber cafe attendant. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, a, it's a friend of mine who is a pastor right now. It's called Pastor Jira. Pastor Jira, uh, I think he should be in Nakuru. The last time we spoke was in Nakuru. He's, he's a senior pastor of Winners Chapel in Nakuru. He's okay. A, a very close friend. We slept on the same bed. Mm -hmm. We used to eat. Uh, there's a fish here called Kamba. Okay. We would walk together after service and sleep on the same bed. And we're still, you know, very close, very close. Uh, until today. Yeah. So it's Pastor Jira that told me, I've seen a job opportunity across the road where you stay. Why can't you try and apply it? So I applied for that first job, uh, okay, among the many jobs. Yeah. I applied for that job, but that is, this is now my first white collar job. Yeah. And I went and approached this woman and she gave me the offer. Um, she's called Gloria Matara. Mm -hmm. Gloria Matara is a very close friend until today. Uh, one of her sisters, Jen Matara, I know Jen will watch this. She's mm -hmm. an advocate, a senior mm -hmm. counsel in this town. Mm -hmm. We met Jen through uh, Gloria mm -hmm. and Jen has become very close. Okay. She's one of the people that I mentor in this city. So Gloria gave me this opportunity and I did the job and I was the manager of the cyber cafe. Nice. Guess how much I was earning? No. 3,000 shillings. Wow, three times. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> so I stayed there and after some time there were some Asians that were operating a laundry and a, a communications shop. They were selling airtime. They poached me. <laughs> they, they paid me double. Wow. Yeah. So, so you're growing. I was every growing, level. yeah. Yes. I was growing. So they began to pay me double. Yeah. I stayed with them and in 2004, mm -hmm. uh, my brother was beginning ministry in, uh, in Voy. Mm -hmm. And he, 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 you know, he shared with me. God had called me yeah. before he left my village. So um, when my brother shared with me that he was beginning ministry, I felt I need to take this venture of faith. Uh, Why can't I relocate and test the waters and see what exactly is God saying? Yes. Because God has, had called me, had given me a scripture, had had encounters. Yes. And one of the key scripture, the key scripture that he gave me was Matthew 16, mm -hmm. 18 and 19. And he told me, you are Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Whatever you'll bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So I was still hanging on that word and I was waiting to know what did God mm. want. So I moved to Voy mm -hmm. and we began the ministry in August. Uh, in fact, I moved, in, I moved to Voy. In, uh, the ministry began in August, but I moved to Voy in October okay. 2004. Mm. So I stayed there under my brother, uh, serving under him. My brother, I immediately follow. I served under him for four good years. Okay. Some so point, pause there. Oh, thank you. We shall continue with your Voy expedition. Thank you. In a few minutes. Okay. We are taking a short commercial break. Uh, when we come back, now Apostle Judah is in Voy and he's starting to do the work that brought him to the coastal region. And you may want to stick around to hear how that goes. I, for one, wants to know. And also, um, he's an author of two books. We'll also be discussing that after the break. For now, we take a quick sip of our uh, drinks from the beautiful Pride in Paradise. As you also do the same, we see you in a bit. Welcome back from the break. This is What's Your Story, still in Mombasa County. Uh, at the Pride in Paradise Hotel and Spa. We have been listening to Apostle Judah Temba of the Global Apostolic Missions Church here in Mombasa. And now you are smack center into what mm -hmm. brought you here. Yes. So you have done, mm -hmm. you have built roads. Yes. You have worked in uh, that company in a for steel a steel company. company. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have taken care of chicken, mm -hmm. washed cars, compound, washed trimmed cars, the fence. trimming fence. At some point, mm. I was the house help. That's exactly where I was going. I'm like, but that's the house. Yeah, you are the at house some help. point, yeah, there used to be house helps. Yes. But at some time, at some point, they will run away. Uh huh. So I'll be left with a young man uh. who has now graduated. Uh -huh. He's finished university. He's called PK. You will watch this uh, yeah. program. I know. He's called PK. So I will be left with PK, and then PK didn't even know how to call, how to mention Nyama. Uh -huh. he used to call it Manya. <laughs> The other way around. Yeah, the other way around. Uh -huh. So I, I still enjoy him until today when yeah. I see him, I tell him, Manya. Yeah, Manya. Yeah, he was a very small boy. Yeah. I have a, you know, I have a, I have, I, have, I remember one of his pictures that I gave him recently when he was a very small boy yeah. and he was like, did, how, did, how did you wow. keep this? Yeah. Yeah, for all these years. So you did all those manual jobs mm -hmm. and now your brother has started ministry in yes. Voy and mm. you have moved to I've Voy. I've moved to Voy, mm -hmm. yes. Mm. So what was that experience like as a young, mm. a very young minister? Okay. Yes, in Voy. You know, I was very ambitious, mm -hmm. but before then I had been, um, 
I'd been uh, I'd been under the mentorship of uh, Living Faith yes. here in Mombasa mm -hmm. under Bishop David Oedepo. Papa. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. So while living, I was I was also I was I was uh, at that very moment I was the interpreter of the senior pastor then. Ah. So uh, you know there was a lot of vigor and ambition, uh -huh. and I needed to experience and get to know what is God exactly saying. Yeah. So I moved there ready to serve, and I was willing to learn. So I went there as a student. Right. And indeed, I, I learned. And I also had the privilege of uh, being in charge of the computer school, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the ministry's computer school. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Voy today, most of the people that work in hospitals, uh, there's a lady called Tekla. She's been working in the district hospital. Uh, there are people working in some of the major supermarkets in Voy. So if you go to Voy today, some of those tellers, when I walk to them, there's a lady called, I think she's called Happiness. She mm. began her own school. Wow. They're my students. Wow. Yeah, so I was privileged to uh, tutor them. Yes. I taught them, you know, when students come in for computer uh, yeah. classes and they don't know anything, you just try and groom them until they get to understand the dynamics. So your professional background is IT yeah. and leadership as IT well. IT and leadership, yeah. Yes. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Something significant also happened in Voy. Yeah, mm -hmm. Be but before that significant thing. Okay. Before that significant thing, I also happened to be privileged to get an opportunity to work with Airtel Kenya. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I did work with them for some time, and I, I, I studied a lot on sales and leadership also on the job. Mm -hmm. I, was, uh, I was privileged to you know, work from Voi and up to Taita Taveta. I used to go to the interiors of Taveta okay. and you know, check the availability yeah. Yeah. of the Airtel products, uh -huh. you know, check the performance of the company and all that. While I also used to train, um, I, I also used to train the, uh, the, the the crew that used to sell airtime. Okay. Yes. Nice. Mm. So all this you're doing and you're still ministering in your brother's. Yeah, all ministry. that I was doing, I was still ministering in my brother's uh, church. Yes. Yes. Okay. I was an associate pastor. What there. were you? Oh, uh, an associate pastor. I was an associate pastor. Yes. So how did you find the experience? Now finally you've mm. tested the waters yes. of ministry. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Well, it's exciting, and you know, uh. Uh, ministry is a, is, a, is a school. And it's a book. Every day you wake up to a new thing. And sometimes God will, will you know, will keep it uh, mysterious. Yeah. So when you wake up, that's when you know, oh, this is what God wants. Uh. But, you know, th that willingness to learn mm -hmm. is what keeps you. Mm -hmm. yeah, that willingness to learn, that's yeah. what keeps you, yes. So what was your duration in Voif? How long were you there? Four years. Ah, yes, four as years. an associate pastor and also working in the marketplace. Yes, also working in the marketplace. Ah, mm. so you balance the two. I used to balance the two. Mm -hmm. mm. Then? Then the good thing. <laughs> well, we met while well, uh, she was on transit. Okay. She was on transit. She used to work with a, a sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. And I think they had lost a colleague. So while they were on transit, I, my sister-in-law just told me, please escort me. I need to catch up with my colleagues. We're traveling to go and bury a colleague. Mm -hmm. So I, I cut This is up. your brother's wife? No, a sister to my brother's wife. Aha, uh -huh. was, uh, okay. uh -huh. was staying with my brother or uh -huh. my brother's wife. So we met and I was like, I think there's something here uh -huh. yeah, that connects us. Uh -huh. So after they had gone on the journey, uh -huh. I began to nag my sister-in-law. In and I would tell her, hey, Sylvia, you need to do something. I need the contact of this person. Wow, we thank God. Yes, I will tell her, you need to do something. Mm -hmm. So I got a contact, but she was... Uh, I don't have a call to get married to a pastor. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah, she said so. <laughs> I remember at some point she wrote me like two full scabs and she was like, uh, I don't have a call to get married to a pastor. Uh -huh. But deep down in my heart, I knew she, you know, we were meant to be. Really? And you know, she was in Mombasa and I was in Voi. Right. Yeah, so oh, she was based here? She was based here. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, she was working for a brother's law firm. Mm -hmm. So um, at some point I felt like, no, this is the right way to go. Uh -huh. So I nagged her until she gave in. <laughs> So that I can have a lyrics. Yeah, I can have lyrics, definitely. <laughs> You're yeah, obvious. Uh, You're yeah, obvious. Where's go anointed? Now, because the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. So she was insisting she's not marrying a pastor. Yeah, she's not marrying a pastor. Mm -hmm. In fact, she told me, you, why can't you get any other person that, you know, you get married to and go on? Yeah. Mm, but I felt, no, this is my This partner. is your lady. Mm, this is my lady. Uh -huh. So I, I, I nagged her until she gave in. And we put the preparations together on yeah. 23rd of February 2008. We were joined together in holy matrimony in wow. Voi. Wow. Yeah, in Voi. That's amazing. And then after one week, uh -huh. she had left the farm that she was working in. Uh -huh. She had worked in that law firm for 10 years. 
uh, one after after we just got married that's when she left that law firm ah, yeah okay and then after one week good enough again yeah the brother calls her uh-huh and uh she's been under the mentorship of the brother uh -huh. the, yeah okay for quite some time and yes. the sister-in-law nice so the brother calls and say there's an opportunity in such and such a place can you go and try it mm. and uh you know good enough she was taken and that's where she's been for uh, quite some time okay. now. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And God has helped her also to, you know, further her studies. Yes. Yeah. She, she should be graduating with a master's soon. Oh, nice. Mm. Wow. Well done. With so God. this young man who walked from Kitale. Yes. Uh, to Nairobi mm -hmm. over a period of a month and a half, mm. sleeping hungry, sleeping outside, yes. not even having water to drink. Mm -hmm. Is finally now married. Wonderful, you yeah. know. You, That's it. You know, you you're married, and mm -hmm. you've been working in mm. you know white collar jobs. Mm. I mean, it's amazing. Mm. And then now, um, so now you you're a husband. Yes. Mm -hmm. And of course, going the family way. Of mm. course, now you want children. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. <laughs> so let's talk about mm. um, your experience, what your experience has been okay. on the family front okay. and the challenges that you have seen mm. in trying to raise a family. Okay. Maybe to just get back, you need to understand that she, when she got the job, she relocated to Mombasa. Yes. And I was in Voi. So I used to travel every now and then. Then I got tired. I yeah. felt no. Yeah. I need to sacrifice whatever I'm doing in Voi and move to Mombasa. Wow. So I sacrificed whatever I was doing in Voi and moved to Mombasa. Mm. That was now in 2009, or late, late 2008. So when I moved in, there's a mentor who is a prophet. Mm. He's called Prophet Samuel Kiariamangi. He is in Voi. Uh, this mentor is the one that was also our best man, him with a wife, uh, Reverend Constance. Mm. So uh, the mentor had had a call to begin ministry in Mombasa. And I, I began, when I moved in, I, I, I felt the urge to just push him to come over. He always thanks me for that. And then uh, 19th of April, he came over and began a ministry. And I served him for seven years and 13 days. He released me on 1st of May 2016 to begin my ministry. Wow. Yeah, on 1st amazing. of May 2016. That's amazing. So I, I, I moved in because I, I, I value a close relationship. I don't like distance relationships. So having moved in, we were expecting our first child on, uh, it was 2009. May, precisely 14th of May, that's when we were expecting our first child. Mm. So on 13th of May, I dropped her at the hospital, and we were, you know, as a young couple, very excited. So I like, dropped her at the hospital. Uh, the custom of, our, of most of our hospitals here is that when you drop, you know, an expectant woman, you go back home. Mm -hmm. So I went back home, and uh, in the morning, she called me, that is on 14th, and she said uh, she has delivered safely. But there's a slight challenge. The child has, uh, you know, some breathing complications, but it's being taken care of. So I came over during the day and checked the child. The child was on oxygen and struggling to breathe, and I knew something is amiss. So we, we held our faith. I was told to buy some medication, which I bought. Yeah. And it was administered to the child. who was a male child. And, uh, you know, as the child was being administered to medically, later on in the evening, I retired home. But at 3 a.m., that night, that was on, it was on 14th, or 15th now, it was done in 15th. I, I got a distress call from my wife and she said, you need to rush back to the hospital. The child is not doing well, we need to change hospital. So I rushed back, rushed back, and good enough, I found she had managed to get an ambulance and we transferred the child to another hospital. We stayed with that child until around 11 p.m. Uh, that is on, I should be on 16th, mm. if I'm not wrong, mm. of May 2009. And then in my hands, the child slept. Hmm. And I tried to tell the, 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 the medical attendant that was attending to the child, are you sure? Because now at that point, you know, the child could not suck the, the milk of the mother. Mm. You were using a tube to, hmm. to you know, breastfeed the child, yeah. to, you know, to, to, to let the milk go down yeah. the throat of the child. So around 11.40 something, 11.43, the child slept. Hmm. So it was a painful incident. Yeah. And we really trusted God to get out of it. And in the course of it, we had to go through some counseling. And then again, in 2010, uh, she conceived. Okay, late 20, 2009, okay. she conceived. Mm -hmm. Then um, 2010, March, she was to, you know, put to bed. And, but unfortunately, in the course of that second pregnancy, good enough, she had, she had conceived twins. Mm -hmm. Now, in the course of this pregnancy, we had done a scan. And we discovered there was a, a slight problem 
uh, the scan was showing there was a slight problem on the head of the of the sun mm -hmm. and I could tell the first one was a sun this second one is also a sun I could tell there's a challenge on the side of suns and on 10th of March 2010 uh, we drove to uh, Pandya hospital and my wife pushed and gave birth to our daughter while still waiting for the gynecologist to arrive the same same case happened like the first one there's delay and all that and you know in children delays it good when they come out they have struggled their chest has problems and mm. all that it, it affects their lungs mm. so they try to administer the necessary medications again after two days the son the young man passed on so I knew that something is wrong something is wrong and we need to attend to it yeah. so I began to engage God in fast and all that I began to seek the Lord and I needed to know what exactly was happening yeah and I knew that this was an, a, a challenge mm. especially to uh, my male seed mm -hmm. so this thing really broke us down you know such challenges really break you down but we held our hands together prayed together yeah. sought for counsel and all that yeah. and God helped us you know such scars really take time to heal yes you know you might or rather such wounds really take time to heal you might heal but the wound is still there and if anyone just True. triggers it yeah. there are moments when the, our first born girl was growing up anytime you will see temperatures you will feel like she's also going to go you are scared and we were living in fear. Mm. God helped us again in 2013. We got another girl. But we knew that there's a problem. Yeah. There's a problem. There's a problem yeah. because uh, why did we lose our, our son? Mm. And we really began to pray. You know, we engaged. Uh, we also began to consult. Yes. Yeah, and yes. do our research. Yes. And get to know where is this problem coming Coming from? from. Yeah. yeah. And you know, there are times that uh, it is good always to give due uh, respect. Yes to whom it's due yes and uh, that's when during that time around 2014 after we had gotten our second born that's when uh, God connected me to my spiritual father mm -hmm. and uh, God blessed my spiritual father he's a prophet of God mm -hmm. Apostle John Suleiman and when God connected us to our spiritual father I went and shared with him what we were going through and he looked at me in his office he looked at me and said you mean I, I, I retrieved the pictures of our two children in the two burials he looked at them with a lot of anger in his spirit he said, you mean you lost your two children? And you know, he cast it like the way Jesus cast the fig tree. Mm. Cast that incident. He said, in the name of Jesus, the Lord release your children. Later on that year, I think it was 2015 or 2014, I went to, uh, the, he had a meeting in Tanzania. And while in that meeting, he had never met my wife. We were seated close, uh, uh, I was seated close to my wife and just beck he, beck on, he, was, he had been, he'd been ministering in the congregation. Then he comes back from the congregation while going, walking back to the altar and he beckons to my wife. He didn't say a word, he just stretched his hand towards my wife's tummy. Mm. And that was it. 2017, God blessed us with the son. He's wonderful. We have named him after the great man of God. Ida Hosa. Mm -hmm. He's a wonderful man. Yes. Very aggressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I, I look at him and I see that he carries a mantle. And uh, to me, I, 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 I treasure and I have family values. Yeah. I think for the past eight Sundays, I've been speaking on family values. Mm -hmm. And one thing I really value is uh, the closeness. Communication, closeness, the ability to pray together. I remember while I was still shattered and beaten and battered, God gave me a word in uh, well, in Voy. And that time I'd been in a relationship that I'd just broken. I, I was in a courtship mm -hmm. that didn't work. And God gives me a word. I believe it should be Isaiah 54. If I'm not wrong, Isaiah 54 beginning from verse 11, mm -hmm. going down to verse 17. And the Lord said, you, are, you that are, is, you know, tossed with tempest and not comforted, I will, I will adorn your, your walls with precious stones, with sapphire, with onyx. Mm. And I'm like, Lord, what do you mean? And then he went down in that uh, portion of scripture. He said, your children will, will be taught of me, and great will be the peace of your children. And that's when you, you know, he goes down in verse 15 of that scripture, and he says, yeah, they shall surely gather, but not because of me. As many that shall gather against you, they shall fall for your sake. So today I look at my children and I say, Lord, I know even without praying for them, there's a promise on them. So how many do you have now? We've got three. Ah, mm. three babies. Yeah, three babies. Wow, yes. nice. Mm. And being a father, yes. Uh, what kind of legacy do you want to leave for them? I want to leave a legacy whereby they will have their own profile. They'll have built their own profile that will leave a mark. They'll not just follow in my footsteps, but they'll build their own profile and, and stand out, not as apps, yeah. 
but as people that God has impacted and yeah. they have their own experience. Like when I look at the, at the personalities of my children, they are different. Mm -hmm. My firstborn uh, daughter seems to be an introvert. She keeps to herself. And you have to be very keen and observer because she can keep things. My, my second born, she will just tell you point blank. Mm -hmm. If the teacher mishandles her, she'll come back and say, Daddy, the teacher yeah. mishandled me. Uh -huh. You know, it's just that we, we have tamed her. Yeah. Now the third born is another one. Uh -huh. He will just tell you openly. Yeah. So these are children that have got different personalities. Mm -hmm. And you know, as a parent, you have to observe their personalities and get to know. You observe the personality of the mother. Yeah. And then you also observe the personality of the children. Because that's what keeps a home. Yes. Because when you don't understand the personality of your partner yes. and the personality of the children that you're mentoring, then it becomes a problem. So I've done, you know, my research, and it never ends. Mm. It's a school that doesn't have an examination. Yes. It's everlasting. <laughs> yeah, so. So the story that you've shared. OK. Are mm -hmm. here. Yeah, the story, my so you have the journey. Two, you have two books. Mm -hmm. This is the first one, A Clean yeah, Heart. Yeah, A Clean Heart. Mm -hmm. I wrote this book while in the mission field in Voy. Mm -hmm. I began to write it in 2007. But funny enough, it was published around two, 2014. Wow. Yeah. Seven was, years later. Yeah, seven years later. Uh -huh. I began to publish it, yeah. yeah. On 4th of September 2007, it was reviewed on 2nd of August 2013, and then it was finalized on 21st March 2014. Wow. That's when it was edited and okay. printed. All so right. this is my first book. Mm -hmm. And God was just opening me up to the dynamics of a clean heart. Yes. Because you need to understand that in life and destiny, if you're going to be impactful, remember, just look, look back and see some of the things I went through. Yeah. To yeah. Look at those painful scenarios. If I got lost with my losses, I will not be here today. It's true. There's a way God has helped me by reason of letting go. So by letting go, I have seen God helping me because God will never ventilate your heart until you let go. Mm. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3 says, with joy shall you draw water out mm -hmm. of the wells of salvation. Mm -hmm. So there's no way you can be inspired. You cannot have revelation yeah. minus being joyful. Mm. So this, ha this book, A That's Clean Heart, it's about. Yeah, it's all about, one of, the, uh, one of the chapters is about the contents of the heart. Okay. What the heart carries. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. Talk to us about the second book. Okay. Wow, the, the second this book. This is the latest one. This is my latest yes. book, yeah. It's fresh off the it press. It is fresh off the press. Uh -huh. In fact, I think it's the first time it's oh. coming, you know. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's coming out uh -huh. in the limelight. Yes. Mm. Uh -huh. So this is my second book. Mm -hmm. It's called The Journey of Faith. Mm -hmm. God inspired me to write this book in order to encourage people that are hurting, people that are giving up in life, people that are failing, and they feel like I'm not going to make it. S and it carries part of the journey that I've just shared. Yes. Yeah, if you read it, yeah. uh, one of the chapters speaks about the challenges I've gone through mm. and also the journey to Mombasa. Mm. So I, I, I've shared n nuggets of faith and one of the, my, my strong statements about faith is yeah. that faith is a living force drawn from the living word to produce living proofs. Mm. I like and I, it. I always say that faith is tangible. Yeah. Faith is feelable. Yeah. Because Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. So faith is tangible. Mm -hmm. And I'm a living proof that faith is tangible. tangible. Because if I didn't die on the road to, to Gilgil, yes. you know, if I didn't die from my village, yes. then faith is tangible. It is tangible. And it is faith that has made me to be here today. I hear you. Mm -hmm. How can people access the books? Could you, could you let them know? Okay. Uh, we, we currently have, um, we have a church page that is called Global Apostolic Missions Church. And you can also email us, email us, send your email to info, info at globalapostolicmissions.org, info at globalapostolicmissions.org, or you can send a text or call plus 254-721-467-962, and then we'll be able to get your copy, uh, get your copy to wherever you are. Nice. The page is on Facebook? Yeah, the page is on Facebook. Okay. We have a church page. It's called uh, Global Apostolic Missions Church. Mm -hmm. You can also go through our website. So we, we haven't put the book on the, the website, but we are intending to do so. Mm. Our website is www.globalapostolicmissions.org. Mm. You can visit our website and see details about our ministry. Nice. And to those who want to give up, someone may be mm. listening to you and okay. they relate so much with mm. the struggles you've been through, mm. but they're still in the struggle. Okay. So could you take a minute and And, and uh, while encouraging, mm. I also want to tell you that there's always a shoulder. There are always mm. people that God has ordained to hold your hands. And if you feel like you want to give up, don't die alone. Don't die with your losses. Identify people that you can reach out to. I know you might have tried to reach out to people that, you know, 
didn't listen to you, they didn't give, an, give you an hearing ear, I want to assure you that there are always people that God has ordained for you. So one thing that I'd like to tell you, because psychologically, the first step towards your healing is accepting what you're going through. If you live in denial, then it will be very difficult for you to get healed. You know, the, we always say that delay is denial. But I, I want to tell you that uh, delay uh, can orchestrate denial if only you are living in denial. But if you refuse to live in denial, then you can come out of that ship of uh, denial. And I think the other thing that I can say is you need to accept yourself. Accept that you're unique by nature. Accept who you are. And don't sit down and preach to yourself negatively. And tell yourself, you know, like in this season that we're in, the season of the pandemic, many people are hurting. You know, many people are distressed. So I want to first and foremost encourage you. And maybe it's uh, expedient I give you a scripture. And let me just paraphrase it. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 to 8. David returns back to Ziklag. He finds Ziklag burned down. You know, the walls are broken down. His two wives are taken away. And they begin to cry together with the soldiers that they had gone to war with. And as they were crying, these soldiers turned against David because they thought it is David that had plotted uh, this kidnap. And uh, they, they decided that they're going to stone him. But the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And he asked Abiathar the priest to give him the, uh, the effort. And when Abiathar gave him the effort, the Bible says that uh, David inquired of the Lord. When he inquired of the Lord whether to pursue them or not, that same book of 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 8, the Lord told him, pursue them, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. So be strong in the Lord. Be encouraged. You are not in this uh, ship alone. Apostle Judah Temba, mm -hmm. I know you had a lot to say. Yes. But that's all the time uh, could allow us to thank talk you. about. Thank you. But I thank you very much for coming to the thank program you. today. Thank I you. I wish you all the success uh, that your books deserve. Thank you. have you. a very, very powerful story. Thank you. And I can only wish you all the best in your next thank steps. You. Thank you so much. Yes. I'd like to appreciate uh, the entire leadership of KTN. I'd like to appreciate uh, all the journalists and the producers and all the people that have made this program uh, successful. Thank you for the opportunity. And to you watching, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, my hope is that you hold on, no matter how tough it may seem right now. There's always light at the end of every tunnel, and Apostle Judah's story exemplifies that truth. To the management of Friday in Paradise Hotel and Spa, Thank you so much for availing this opportunity to film from your beautiful beach resort. And we hope that we can do this many, 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 many more times. So have a blessed week ahead.